For today, we're going to be looking at number 10 in the circulation problem set. And this is asking us to examine the four different pressures that are involved in bulk flow processes and to determine which one of those pressures would not cause an increase in lymphatic flow. So in other words, we're looking for one of the factors that would decrease the potential for lymph flow. So in order to do this, we're going to draw up a general representation of a capillary at the top of our screen. We're going to represent those endothelial cells just as dashed lines. So this is our capillary. And then right outside of that, down below, would be the interstitial fluid. So we know from our lectures that there are four different pressures that are involved in the bulk flow within capillaries of the body. So first, we have our heart that's going to be pumping. We'll just do a very generic version of the heart there, not anatomically correct. Because the heart is going to be pumping blood into our blood vessels, that would result in a pressure that's called the blood hydrostatic pressure, or we'll just abbreviate it here as BHP. So that's going to be one of the main pressures that would tend to promote filtration, or the movement of fluids from inside the blood compartment to the interstitial fluid. Now, if this were the only factor that were involved, we would lose all of our fluid out of blood vessels. So we know that there has to be something else that's operating to bring the fluids back. So we also have another pressure, which is called the blood colloid osmotic pressure. And that's due to the fact that within the blood vessel, we have large molecular weight proteins that are unable to pass out through those endothelial cell clefts. So the water is attracted by osmosis back to those proteins, and that results in our blood colloid osmotic pressure. So this would be the main pressure that would tend to promote reabsorption in the blood vessel. Now, one other pressure that we have that we're going to manipulate in this particular problem, although it's typically not a very large pressure, is the interstitial fluid, colloid osmotic pressure. So this is due to the fact that sometimes there can be some proteins that might escape out into the interstitial fluid, so they would be promoting filtration of that fluid by osmosis. All right, and then last but not least, there is another pressure here, the interstitial fluid, hydrostatic pressure, which would tend to promote reabsorption. This is going to occur if for some reason pressure starts to build out in the interstitial fluid. So you can think of this as a back pressure of hydrostatic pressure. Now what this problem is asking for is the tendency for us to come out and form lymph. So we're looking at the influence of these pressures on the formation of lymph. So in other words, we're talking about lymph is going to be more likely to be formed if there's something that either increases filtration or if there's something that decreases reabsorption of the fluid by bulk flow processes. So we're trying to determine this situation a factor that wouldn't cause that to happen. So we're looking for really a situation where there's less lymphatic flow. So let's just go through each one of these sequentially. So let's look at the first one, and that was the increase in capillary oncotic pressure. So for A, that's just another term that describes our blood colloid osmotic pressure. So here we're looking at a situation where there's an increase in blood colloid osmotic pressure. We can see from our diagram that that is going to promote reabsorption. So in other words, we're going to have more fluid that's actually going to be going back into the capillaries by the bulk flow processes. So we would have less lymph formation. 
So if we look back at our stem, we're looking for a situation where there would be a decrease in lymphatic flow. And so this is actually showing up to be a correct answer. We do need to go through the others and make sure that they're not correct as well. All right, so for response B, what we have there is an increase in the blood hydrostatic pressure. So if we look back up at our diagram, we can see that this promotes filtration. And so the tendency here would be to increase our lymph formation. There would be more fluid passing out from the capillary into the interstitial fluid, which could then enter into our lymphatic capillaries. So that eliminates B as a correct response. Also eliminate E as a response, because we know not all of the above will increase lymphatic formation and flow. Let's go through the other two, just to make sure that we understand why they are not correct choices for this particular stem. Okay, for C, we're looking at a situation where there would be an increase in the capillary permeability. Okay, so what that would do is a couple of different things. So if we go back up to our diagram, if we increase the permeability, so essentially if you want to think of this as we're making the gaps a little bit wider between the endothelial cells. So more of these proteins could actually come out through those endothelial cell clefts and go into the interstitial fluid. So what we would see in this situation is a drop in the blood colloid osmotic pressure, because essentially there's flu fewer proteins inside the capillary. At the same time, we would see an increase in the interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure. So there's two different things that are happening here. We have less proteins inside the capillary, so blood colloid osmotic pressure goes down. Those proteins then go out into the interstitial fluid, so our interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure would go up. So the overall result of these two factors would be an increase in overall filtration. So more fluid would be passing out into the interstitial fluid. So we have more potential formation of lymph. So once again, we're looking for a situation that wouldn't increase lymph. So we need to eliminate C as an answer as well. All right, and then our very last one, D, there is an increase in the tissue oncotic pressure. Okay. That's just another way of saying an increase in the interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure. So remember that those two terms could really be used interchangeably. Oncotic is just another term for colloid osmotic, and tissue and interstitial fluid pressures could be used interchangeably here. So we've already seen from our diagram above that an increase in the interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure would increase filtration, which would, of course, lead to an increase in lymph formation. And since we're looking for a situation that's going to decrease lymph formation, we can subsequently eliminate answer response D as well. All right, so hopefully by going through these different pressures, you were able to refresh and expand on your knowledge of the four different pressures involved in bulk flow and put them into use with an actual problem. Please let me know if you have any more questions about this material.